Hello! In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the timer component. We use the timer when we want some chunk of code to run at some regular interval. While this is useful in video games, for example, we will start off by making a simple counter. Note that I've already started my application. The name of the project is Timer Simple. I've added one text box whose name is text interval or txt interval. I've added two buttons. I've named them btn start and btn stop. And I've added a label whose name I've called lbl counter. So add them to your project and rename them in the usual way. Before we write any code, we need to add a timer. That is found here in the toolbox under the components tab. Simply click it and drag it to the form. Notice it gets docked here below. Let's take a look at some of its properties. The name starts off as timer1. I'm going to change this to TMR counter. is going to be the timer that counts for us. The two properties that get used most often are enabled, which starts off as a default false, and the interval, which is 100. If you actually click on the interval, you can see here that this gives the frequency of elapsed events in milliseconds. So 100 milliseconds is 0.1 seconds. To begin, let's change this enabled to true. By enabling the timer, the timer's code will automatically begin after the form loads. And let me show you how to add code to the timer. If we want something to run at a particular time, in this case our interval is 100 milliseconds or 0.1 seconds, we would need to add that code under the timer. So double click on this timer icon here. The code window opens and uh, the subprogram is timer counter, which is the name of our timer, underscore tick. This is the, the method by which we're going to write our code. So every time the timer ticks, this code will run. And let's just make it be something quite annoying. Let's just make it be a beep. So every tenth of a second, the timer will run, and you'll hear an audible beep on your speakers. So if we run the program, okay. number one, it's annoying, and number two, the timer is going too fast for our system to keep up with it. So let's go and change the interval property in the code. We'd like to add this code to the form load, so double click on the form, and then as the form loads, let's change the, the interval of the timer. TMR counter that interval. Let's make it run every one second. So that interval again in milliseconds is 1,000. 1,000 milliseconds is one second. Now if we run it, much more pleasing beep every tenth of a second. Oh, sorry, every second. Let's make it even more user friendly by making it so that when we press the start button the beeping starts not whenever the form loads so we can do that again inside the form load we'll make the timer counter enabled property equal defaults which is the default if you recall we changed it to true in the properties window so now if we run this the timer will not run and you will not hear the beep. To make it run, we want to click on the button start, the start button, and whenever the user clicks on this, we of course want the timer enabled to equal true. And whenever we click on the stop button, of course we want to stop that from happening. Timer countered dot enabled equals false. 
So let's run that and see what happens. We're waiting for the user to press the start button, so let's do that. And then to stop it, simply press the stop button. Okay. Now let's give the user even more control. Let's allow them to type in an interval, and then whenever we press the start button, that new interval will change the, the frequency of the beat. So again, in the form load, we can set the default value to the timer interval value. So this will put in 1000 into our text box whenever we run it. And then once we hit the start button, we would like to set the timer interval to the value inside the text box. And that's done like so. So whatever is inside the text box will then be so stored as the counter's interval. Of course, you have to be careful here. The type only numbers, letters will crash the program. So let's run that and see what happens. So it runs every second. Perhaps we should run it every half a second. All right, perfect. Next thing we'd like to do is, as the timer runs, to increase the value of the counter, starting with 1, and every time it beeps, to add 1 to the counter. To do that, we're going to need a global variable We'll type this up here in the declaration section of our class. Actually, I'm going to make this a single. Okay. So this counter is just something that we've created. And it's going to keep track of how many times we beep. It's important to make this a global. If we make it local to the timer, uh, it will reset itself and never be able to be added to. So inside the timer click, we want to increase the counter by one. And then finally, let's make the label text equal to our counter. While Visual Basic will initialize all unused variables to zero, it's always a good idea to initialize your iterative variables. So inside the form load, I'm going to set counter equal to zero. We run this. Every second the counter increases. The last thing I would like to show you is just a little fluff. I'm going to show you how to change the font and the font size and the style of the font in our label box dynamically uh, during the runtime. Use the with command because we're going to change many of the properties of the label. Label counter. So again, with the with command, we can easily change the properties without having to retype label counter. The text we'd like to start off the label with is just simply equal to zero. The border style, we're going to use a fixed 3D. The back color, of course, none of this is important, but I thought this little bit right here might interest some of you. We can change the font. Now, 
a lot of people think you can change the font dot size for example to change the font size but this simply just returns the value of the font size it does not change it the way you can change the font is to simply type dot font of course this is label counter dot font equals and now we have to create a new font okay the font style I want is courier the size I want is 23 and then in IntelliSense it comes up let's make it bold Now if we run it, our font background and border style and size are all have changed. So if we run this, we get what you would expect. All right. Well, that concludes today's tutorial on using timers. Next, I'll let you try your hand at making a stopwatch. Thanks for watching.